Hello everyone. Okay, today we come back and learn uh, something new. But before learning something new, let's review our old lesson from last week. Okay, what did you learn last week? We learned about paragraph writing. In topic sentence, supporting sentences, concluding sentence. So you already know uh, about the meaning of the paragraph writing, right? What is it? What is paragraph? Paragraph means paragraph means uh, a group of related sentences about a single topic. How about topic sentence? How do you say it is the topic sentence? Do you understand the word sentence? Sentence must have a sentence must have a subject and a verb. So a topic sentence must be a complete sentence. Okay, that consists a topic and then a controlling idea or main idea. Okay, that main idea or controlling idea will not give you detail or more information about what you are going to tell or to write or say. So the detail will give you in the supporting sentences. Okay? So in the supporting sentences, you are going to provide more details and you give explanation and example or something like that. And then concluding sentence means you restate or say again, is that the topic sentence or you summarize something you have already mentioned or described in the supporting sentences? Okay, that's from previous uh, lesson. So let's move to a new uh, learning today. Uh, today we learn about paragraph unity and coherence. So Okay, look at the question. How many elements that make a great paragraph? Elements, important point, important parts. Uh, what is it? Uh, the first one is unity, second is order, third is coherence, and then completeness. Okay, what is unity? Look at the meaning of unity. It, do you understand the word unit, right? Mean one. Unity is a very important characteristic of a good paragraph writing. And it means that one paragraph is, you are talking about one idea, only one main idea in one paragraph. So it means unity. Here, like if you are talking about uh, the advantages of living with your parents, so you have to link okay, all the sentences like the topic, the supporting sentences, the detailed sentences, and concluding sentences are all telling the reader about one main topic. So you are talking about the advantages of living with your parents, you only discuss about advantages, do not discuss about disadvantages. So it is called like unity. So if your paragraph contains a sentence or some sen sentences that are not related to the main topic, then we say that the paragraph like unity. So um, the paragraph like unity or that the sentence is off topic. Sorry, I look at the time I said should be 20 minutes okay mm, one hour. 20 minutes okay come back okay or you can say another way unity means that a paragraph discuss one and only one main idea from the beginning to the end as I already explained in the previous slide. So if you are talking about one point from the topic sentence, you have to explain that topic, uh, that 
main IT in the supporting sentences and you concluded that that uh, topic sentences sentence okay so from the beginning to the end you're only talking about one main idea here if we talk about the advantages of living with your parents discuss only that do not discuss the disadvantages look which sentence does not have unity Okay, Sunday is my favorite day because I can watch football with my dad. There are the sports on other days to watch on TV. Which sentence must be the second sentence? There are the sports on other days to watch. While at the first sentence, you are talking about uh, your favorite day uh, to watch football with your dad okay and then you're in your second sentence you are talking about the other spot okay so it is different you are talking about two different things do not include unrelated details so the sentence like this don't relate to the main idea in the topic sentence there are other spots on other days to watch on tv or some days my dad doesn't make it home from work until after I'm in bed. Okay, look at the example opportunity. There is a better start to the paragraph. Okay, Sunday is my favorite day because I can watch football with my dad. He spends the whole day watching football on TV with me since he doesn't have to work that day. So the second sentence elaborates on the main <clears throat> topic. This is a unified style. Okay, move to the second one. Order. Understand the word order, right? Which come first, which come next, something like that. You can order your supporting sentences in different way. One by chronologically. Chronolo chronology, okay? In order, order of heaven in time. First, second, third, next, then, after, something like that. Two, by importance. Do you mention or describe something from the most important to the least important or from the least important to the most important? And three, by logic. Do you explain something, something that can make the reader easy to understand about what you are talking about? Uh, does it make sense when you explain? Does it link from your previous idea? You, from your previous explanation, something like that. So logic. Why is order important? So random sentences cause confusion with the organization of your sentences. It's hard to tell what your main idea is. Okay, order have. You make your point and have the reader follow along from one idea to the next one until you prove your conclusion. So like it has, it is logic when you read to understand, okay, it makes sense when they explain that way, it's easy to understand and, and you are feeling to read something like that. What is the correct order of these sentences? Okay, check from A, B, C, D and E. A is start with like N. If I'm really late, I even miss the school bus. B, if I forget to set my alarm, I get up late and rush through everything. C, as a result, I often have to calm my purpose. D, it's always, it, it's always much better if I remember to set the alarm, so I have more time to get ready. E, I also might rush out and forget my books. Which one should be the first one? It must be letter D. It's always much better 
if I remember to set the alarm, so I have more time to get ready. Okay. So, and the next one should be like letter B. If I forget to set my alarm, I get up late and rush, rush through everything. And then you're gonna say more. I also might rush out and forget my book. Okay. And then, and if I'm really late, I'm even miss the school bus. Ah, oh, should be a letter B again. Letter B and um, sorry, D. And then um, B, B and then A and then E and then as a result of often have to call my breakfast. Okay, come back to coherence. Coherence refer to the certain characteristic of all aspects, aspect of writing. So it means stick together. Coherence means stick together. So coherence in writing means that all the idea in the paragraph flow smoothly from one sentence to the next sentence. Okay, with coherence, the reader has an easy time understanding the idea that you wish to express. Okay, a good writer and the writer who can create coherence uh, in the paragraph is the one who know how to just connect her, okay? So connect her and uh, words that we use to add coherence to our writing, to the tie ID together, for example. Uh, how can you connect the two sentences together, one in the uh, two in the independent sentence? So you are going to use, how you are going to use, uh, but or, and or so something like that how do you connect one sentence to another and if you don't use connector what punctuation do you use something like that so connect not only coordinating conjunction so there are seven coordinating conjunction like and but so for or jet something like that you also have to know the other connector like a uh, subordinator, uh, subordinating conjunction, uh, conjunctive at work, something like that. Okay. For example, like as, uh, uh, however, okay. Furthermore, uh, in addition, okay, uh, additionally, something like that. In contrast, and subordinating conjunction like as soon as while something like that you have to know all those words in order to connect your writing okay to make the flow smooth something like that coherence again this is how you make your writing understandable to the reader you make your paragraph coherent by connecting ideas to one another Okay, two ways. One is to use transition word to add bridge from one sentence to the next. Two, be consistent in using verb tense and point of view. Okay, number one type of transition. Okay, word that show order like first, second, third, uh, next, then, after, okay, later on, something like that. Uh, word showing special relationship like above, below, beside, what showing logical order for the more in fact in addition, additionally, moreover, in contrast, okay, however, something like that. <clears throat> Talking about verb tense, so verb tense should all be consistently present tense or consistently past tense. 
So if your paragraph talking about past, the past you have to mention in all verb tense in the past. If you are talking about something in the present, in all verb tense must be in the present tense. Check it. <clears throat> Sunday used to be past tense. Sunday used to be my birthday because I could watch football with my dad. He spends this is past tense used to, could used to, here he spends present. He spent the whole day watching football on TV with me since he doesn't have to work that day. So this is present, this is present. What is it? This is not unified intent. Okay, <clears throat> two, again, what tense point of view, right? from the point of view in the same of the same person okay so the whole paragraph if you are talking about he 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 you should talking about he not change to i or something like my so sunday is his favorite day because he can watch football with his dad i have lunch with my dad while we watch a game together so when you read what is your feeling? Do you think that the writer is good at have uh, uh, coherence in his writing? And do you understand from one sentence to another, is it different or the same uh, using with a personal pronoun, something like that? So while he mentioned he, he, and then come to I, my, we. So it is not good. <clears throat> Last one is completeness. For a complete paragraph, you need enough information to support the main idea or prove your uh, paragraph or thesis. So if all sentences clearly and so roughly support the main idea, the paragraph is complete. So main part of a complete paragraph, you have to know how to, you have to know about paragraph structure that has to be See parts, okay? Your paragraph should have topic sentence supporting sentences and concluding sentences. In the topic sentence, it is an interesting subject and its controlling idea. And supporting sentences, usually at least three to develop the main idea so roughly. And three concluding sentence to summarize the main idea and reinforce the topic sentence. Okay, check out together the same part of paragraph with all the four elements. We can read all together. Sunday is my favorite day because I spend the day watching football with my dad. On Sunday, unlike the other day of the week when he works, my dad spends the whole day with me watching football on TV. We even eat lunch together while watching the highlight of the day is watching the dolphin game that and i get so excited we chill and cheer together on sunday i get to combine watching my favorite sport and spending time with my favorite person what a great day so you can see that what tense is all present tense and he talk about he and his dad <clears throat> spending time watching TV with his dad, okay? Mm. So it has logic, you can understand, right? This is the end of the presentation. Let me stop by here and then we continue to another point with the next video. Chosen. Insane.